Hi, today what we want to do is we want to show you um, both an efficient way to wash specimens and dry them, as well as separate out very small things, so things like Microhymenoptera and other tiny insects, from larger things like aculeate wasps and bees, so that you can provide both fractions of insects. This technique was shown to me by uh, our friends at the Smithsonian, at the USDA uh, lab Microhymenoptera Laboratory there, and uh, we modified it slightly, but it's uh, largely their idea. We'll show a link to their publication on this in a second, but we're going to do a video, briefly show you how they do it, and then how we do it in larger batches. Okay, if you look over here, what the basic uh, item that you need to have is an orbital shaker, or an orbital shaker table, and there's three here, two of which don't really work, but Want, this one is working currently, and the idea is simple. You have some sort of tub. It's got soapy water in the bottom. You can have a strainer. This is from Ikea. I'm sure other things can work. And if you look inside the tub, you will see that the water comes just up to the uh, level of the um, screen and a little bit more, and what's going to happen is that's going to wash back and forth and you put specimens in there and it will clean them gently over a period of time. You set the timer, so 10 minutes is usually uh, sufficient. Here we'll do a little demonstration. Here's a bag of uh, bees and other things that were collected in Somerset County and we're going to simply dump them into here and out of a whirl pack. Okay, you can see the specimens in there. I'm going to add a big squirt of dishwashing detergent. doesn't really matter what kind. Um, and we are going to start the um, timer, we're going to put it on 10 minutes, and you can see it sloshing back and forth inside the tub. We can set the speed on almost all these orbital shakers to faster or slower. Um, fairly gentle is fine. Uh, we then um, can put a lid on top of this. We can stack additional boxes on, on top until some critical number of boxes is reached and things fall over. Or you can find larger orbital shaker tables where you can put in multiple uh, boxes of these. You can do quite a number at once. But essentially you have one box, one set of specimens from one location being processed at, at one time. Then once this is finished, what's going to happen is you will uh, remove the specimens. The upper part, the screen part, is going to have your larger insects and the smaller insects will have um, fallen through. We'll stop this for a second. And even at, over the short period of time you can see that there are at least a few smaller insects in there even though this was a netted um, batch of bees uh, using this example. So then what would happen is you would um, rinse off the specimens directly under the faucet that are in the screen basket and then you would dump the smaller insects that are in the wash water through a strainer, a very small strainer, a, tea, a tiny tea strainer or potentially a brine shrimp net. Then you could transfer them to alcohol or wherever else you wanted to transfer them. So we will continue washing these for about 10 minutes because what that's going to do is going to get rid of all the pollen and all the hairs and it'll make sure that any small insects do get transferred out of the screened area into the area below and it guarantees that you wash insects for a long enough period of time to remove nectar and pollen and other sticky substances to get nice looking specimens. Okay, so now we want to demonstrate how to wash and process multiple specimens, or actually sets of specimens in one box because most orbital shaking tables are small and you, rather than doing them one at a time, you can do maybe six or seven in one plastic tub. So here's a plastic tub, here's a set of specimens right here. I'm going to open up this bag and a lot of times the easiest thing to do is going to be to just simply cut off the top of the whirl pack if you're using whirl packs and we're going to do this over the box so we don't get everything all dirty like we just did and we're going to take a set of 
netting. This is actually from the fabric store. And this, you have to go to the wedding section and you get petticoat material, which apparently is used if you are in a wedding. Mostly not for guys, but for girls. And it's the right size, the holes are the right size, so that um, very few bees, which we're interested in, are small enough to actually go through those holes, but a lot of the other um, small parasitic bees and wasps, um, no, parasitic wasps go through and um, dirt. So you take, you set that in there, the circle is a marker for how to set this up, and you take a bag of specimens and you dump it into the middle of the circle. We're doing this in the box. Take out the tag, put that into a petri dish, which will come into play later. We're doing this in the box so that any um, small specimens of parasitic hymenopter or anything that come out at this stage fall into the um, box below and can be retrieved in the wash water. So I'm opening up the bag even further just to ease the transition of all the specimens out. In this case, there's not many small insects because these were probably netted, I'm not sure. So we have them in there. Anything that small is potentially fallen through. And then we use our round circle as a uh, marker to um, line up so that no gaps are going to occur when we rubber band the netting. Because what we want is a pocket down here that contains the insects and an, an enclosure above and no way for the insects inside there to get out. Then we're just going to rubber band this bad boy together and we are ready except for that I forgot to put in a marker device which we call a jewel to indicate which bag this is. So right now we have no tag in there so obviously we would be confused if we just threw in six different bags. So what we do is we use these little jewels from the craft store. So um, we're going to use yellow, put a yellow one in there, then we're going to put a yellow one in the petri dish and now we know that this batch is the yellow batch and you can use multiple colors if you are um, doing multiple bags. We are done. This can then be dropped in here. We can do that for multiple batches of insects and they can be put in with a small amount of water. You don't really want to fill this up. You want a lot of wave action and uh, you add soap and just like the last time you turn it on, put a lid on top so water doesn't slosh out and come back in 15 minutes and then you reverse the process taking things out and then drying them. Uh, we'll show you the dryers that we use now that we like is we use um, PVC drain vent pipe. We have a um, coupling at the top which is just friction fit onto the um, pipe below. The bottom of the pipe has a section of fiberglass window screen that is glued on with the type of uh, pipe dope that is used to attach these same pieces of plastic because it says it's fiberglass but this is actually just plastic and you can buy just this uh, loose screen in it's very inexpensive in three yard rolls and then you do the same to the top of the coupling and what you then have is the ability to drop all your specimens in there and run a blow dryer through one end and it's very efficient in that the air is flowing through in an approximately a minute the 60 count your specimens are dry. We usually blot off as much of the water in the bags after washing them as possible before putting them in but still it's a very fast process compared to um, any other technique including using a canning jar which is what we've done in the past. That's pretty much it. Um, again this is called a fractionator and we thank our USDA friends for pointing out to us and has increased our bees per hour greatly in the lab. Thank you very much.